Alrighty, today we're going to do a uh, robot design. This is lesson two in our intro to Python and coasters. Let's get started. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to distinguish between comments and lines of code. You kind of know how to do this already, but it helps to reinforce it. Use comments to help us understand code. And use variables to, uh, to name objects on the stage. Now your end product for this lesson is going to be uh, to reproduce an Alma Thomas painting, or the spirit of an Alma, Alma Thomas painting. Just take a look at an example over here. Let's look at an example, I don't know, number three here. So use code to draw one of Alma Thomas's paintings. Your version does not have to be exact, but try to capture the spirit of the painting. Animate your shapes to add movement to your art. So if we run this, this is what our program looks like. So all of it, we have a bunch of rectangles that all come in, and then they turn right, and then at the end we have a circle and a triangle, and they kind of spin around. So if you see, we have a coaster that's dark blue over here. It starts in this position. So it starts this way, and then it turns you know, up. So it turns right. And they just kind of reproduce this B1, B2, B3. And then they just, they just have, they just change the parameters. They kind of, they kind of use the same rectangle like a bunch of times, right? And then they just change the parameters a little bit to uh, have different rectangles. You know, uh, they might change the, the position. They might change the color, all that kind of good stuff. But how do you get to that point? Well, let's figure it out figure that out. Let's get started here. So today you'll be learning about shapes, including parameters and more complex shape commands. So we did some shapes before when we did that house, you know, with like the big triangle on top and the, and, the, and the rectangle for the door and the square for the house, right? Now we're going to do some more shapes and like learn more about parameters and comments and stuff. So find the, let's click run first. All right. Now try to change the width of the face. All right, find the square named face. So on line two, we have this uh, square called face. Face equals coasters.square. Then we have some parameters inside our parentheses over here. Try changing the width and the color to see how it affects the picture. So it goes x, y, width, color. So we want to change the width. We can make it bigger, smaller, whatever we want. I'm going to change it to 299. And the color is going to be, I don't know, black. No. There we go. Check plus. Great job. You made the robot's face bigger. Well, just a little bit bigger, 19 pixels bigger. You notice what I did there is I used the comment to figure out what the parameters of the face are. All right. Check for understanding. Here are a few questions to help you understand. Remember what you've learned so far. Look at the shape command in the editor below. Now, if you saw how quickly there was like that blue rectangle, answer the questions on the stage to the right by clicking on the correct answers. All right. So, which parameter is the shape's width? Is it the first, second, third, or fourth? So it's x, y width. So it's the third. How wide is the shape? X, y width is 100 pixels wide. See, 100. Which of the given parameters is a string? Now we know that strings have quotation marks around it. Here it's blue. So all right, what color is our rectangle? It's a blue rectangle. And we can't put it, if we just put in blue without quotation marks, it's going to think that we're talking about a variable, but we don't have any variable called blue. But our rectangle relies on a string as one of the parameters to, for blue. And again, the order matters when you put them in side of our uh, parentheses. And also, make sure you notice that they have commas after each one. So that kind of like tell, the, tells the, the computer, this is the first parameter, comma. This is the second parameter, comma. This is the third parameter. So if you don't have those commas there, then things won't work correctly. It'll assume that we're talking about one parameter that has like two things in it, and it, that doesn't work right. Let's submit our work. Next thing. Let's start by giving our robot a face. The shape of the face will be a square. Use the parameters for the shape are the integers and strings in parentheses. All right, so let's go to uh, shapes. Let's drag out a square. We don't have to change anything right now. We will later, but right now, let's save it and run it. Now we have a blue square. Obviously, it didn't look anything like the robot that we had before, but we're just getting started. I got an email. We'll be using a few shapes to make our robot, so we should make sure each piece has its own name. Remember, we're giving our square a new variable name. All right, so right now our, our square is called sprite. We want to call our square face. Right? Shouldn't have quotes, because if we put quotes around it, that makes it a string. 
and it looks exactly the same, but now instead of be calling instead of being called sprite, it's called space. This helps us when we're doing a, we're using a bunch of different sprites or a bunch of different variables. If everything's called the same thing, it makes it way too confusing. Or the computer only can have one thing be called sprite at the same time. So otherwise, it treats whatever's most recently been called sprite or whatever variable name you're using. That will say, and if you make any changes to it, whatever one's most recently been used will be changed. All right, let's make our robot's face bigger. Comments are part of our part of our code that does not get read by the computer. All right, so over here on line one over here, we have our hashtag. This says in Python, this is how we start off uh, a comment. Different computer languages have different ways to put in comments. All right, uh, comment code start with a hashtag and our gray. Use the comment and blah blah blah. Let's change the width to 280. So x y width 00 100 280. Let's run that. Remember squares, they don't need a width and a height because by definition, a square has equal sides. Equal, the sides are all of equal length and the, um, the in interior angles are all 90 degrees, right? That makes it a square. All right. Uh, let me see. Save and run. Oh, submit work. Next thing. This program has a bug, which means we need to debug it. When a shape has multiple parameters, the parameters must be separated by commas. Click run and read the error message. Bad input on line 2. Debug the program so that it draws a cyan colored circle. All right, so right now we have 0, 190, but after 90, we don't have a comma. So right now it thinks this 90 cyan is one parameter. That doesn't make any sense. So let's put a comma after that one and run it. Great job debugging the program. Now our circle shows up. So it's, it uh, starts off in 0 in the middle, it moves up 100 pixels, has a di uh, diameter of 90, and is co uh, colored cyan. Each of those is a separate parameter, so we have to have commas after each one, except for the last one. Let's make the square look more like a robot face. Change the square's color to the string silver. So right now, change it from blue to silver. Remember, leave the quotation marks there. Now we have a nice silver robot face. All right, let's add a star as our first robot eye. So go to shapes. You're going to take a star, put that over there, and you're going to call it I1. Okay, now we have a big fat star in the middle of our fake robot face. Let's change the star's location. The star has five parameters, four are integers, and one is a string. We use these parameters to change the appearance of the star on the stage. So the first two are the x and the y. So where is our star located on the stage? We wanted to move it up and to the right a little bit. So over to the right and then up. So we want to change the x parameter to 50 and the y parameter to 50. Let's do that. Don't forget, they always give you like a little preview of what it looks like over here. Let's uh, submit work. Does, do these things match? Yes, they do. So we know we got it right. Plus, we got our check plus too. <coughs> Let's resize the eyes so that it fits the robot's face. Change the star's points uh, parameter to 7. So points, right now it's 5. We change that to 7. Change the star's radius parameter to 30. Right now it's 100. Change it to 30. Now we have a much smaller seven-pointed star instead of a bigger five-pointed star. Let's change the robot's eye color. Color parameters are strings. They should be green and surrounded by quotes. Right now it's blue. They want it to be green. Make sure you keep the quotation marks there. Now we have a green seven-pointed star. Let's give it another eye. So let's go back to shapes over here. We're going to do another eye. Another star. Oh, sorry, regular polygon, my fault. Not a star. This one's going to be called I2. I2, M and I. All right, we got this big old hexagon. Then I'm going to move it around in the right spot, right? All righty. Submit work. Next thing. 
let's change the star's location. So we're going to change it to negative 50, so move it to the left a little bit, and then up a little bit, so it lines up with our first eye. I think that's all we have to do, right? Yep. That's, obviously, we have to change the size and all that kind of stuff. Let's make uh, I2 an 8-sided polygon. So right now it's XY side, so we have to change this from 6 to 8, to octagon. Right, and then next we'll probably change the, uh, the size of it. Next activity. You see now it has 8 sides. Find the radius uh, parameter of the polygon and change it to 30. So ma match the, pr the, uh, the, pr the radius of the star here, so they're the same size. Now we have an octagon with eight sides and a radius of 30. So from the middle over to one of the, to the, to the corners over here, it is uh, 30 pixels. Submit work. Integers are not surrounded by quotes. Strings must always be surrounded by quotes. All right, so let's fix this bug here. Let's run it. Oops, name plum is not defined on line two. So you see over here, we have two mistakes. One is we want this radius to be 100. Right now, if I have quotation marks around it, that makes it a string, not an integer. Secondly, plum has to, is that if I, you see it's orange, that means it's a, it's a variable. We don't have any variables as one of our parameters for this sprite over here, but if we chain put quotation marks around it, we do need a, a string, and this plum is a color, like this, that li this light purple color that you can kind of see over here. So you gotta change that plum from a variable to a string. There are two things we have to do there. Change this to an integer, change this to a string. Not the other way around. Now let's draw the robot's mouth. All right, so we're going to go back to shapes over here. We're going to, so I'm going to drag out an ellipse. We're going to change it to mouth. Not sprite, mouth. Although sprite does go into your mouth if you like to drink soda. Let me see. Check plus, great job. Got to fix this here in a second. We don't want the robot's mouth to be in the middle of its face, so let's change its y coordinate. So we're going to move it. For right now, our y coordinate is at 0. We want to change that to negative 50, where the second number is the y coordinate. x is the first. Let's run that. Now it's down some. All right now it looks like it's in the right spot. Now we're going to change the width and the, and the height. So the width is goes z x, y, width. Change the width to 125, so a little bit wider from 100 to 125. A little bit thinner, flatter, from 50 of a height, 50 height to 30 height. And these measurements are in pixels, like each little dot on the screen. Great, check plus, submit work. Let's go on. Let's change the color of the mouth. We're going to make our mouth purple. Drink some purple Kool-Aid. There we go. Now we have a nice purple mouth. There we go. This program has a bug, which means we need to fix it. This program has a logic error. Let's take a look at it. So right now, our, our rectangle is has a, a height of 30 and a width of 300. We want it to be the other way around, a width of 30 and a height of 300. So it goes x, y, width. So we change this to 30 and change this to 300. This way it'll match this rectangle over here. Let's run that. So again, the order of our parameters are already set. So when I say closures.rectangle, and I, then I have my parentheses, it expects certain things in a certain order for the parameters. We, you can't just pick and choose you know, which, which parameter comes first. Those are set already. So we expect the x and the y, then the width, then the height, and then the color. Check plus, submit work, next activity. All right, let's answer some questions here. Here are a few questions for you to check what you have learned. Click run and watch the stage. Okay, we've got a five point purple star. Answer the questions that are right by clicking on the correct answers. So how many points does the star have? We saw that it has five, but you can, without having seen the stage, right, you can see that it goes x, y points so points is 5. Look in the editor to find the radius of the star. What is it? It goes x, y, points, radius, 
Radius is 100. Is that one of our answers? It is. How will we change the code to name the star Twinkle? Now, remember, we set up our variables because Sprite is a variable. I need a text miss. Thank you, Amazon. All right. Uh, I should just put my phone in airplane mode while I'm doing like these videos, right? Anyways, so click run and watch the stage. I did that already. Uh, all right, third question. So when we set up our variable name, right, remember, it, 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 the variable goes on the left of the equal sign, and then we have our equal sign, and then we have the value of whatever that variable is on the right-hand side. So we want to change it from sprite to twinkle. So this one, A and B can't be the right answer because we want our sprite to be named twinkle instead of sprite. So over here, we have C and D. Now it can't be D because D has quotation marks around it. That would make it a string. So the only answer that makes any sense is C. Alrighty, now customize your program. Make sure you complete these minimum technical requirements. Try adding a background. Add an antenna. Try using a rectangle or a line. Use a sprite click event to animate some part of your robot face. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a stage. I'll do, uh, what do I want? Let's do space. All right, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put the stage at the beginning over here. Let's run that. I like to do it like in steps. You'll, you'll get a like, check minus because obviously I didn't finish, right? I didn't complete requirement two. Let's add an antenna. So I'm going to put in a rectangle over here up top. I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to do a rectangle. Um, rectangle right here. I'm going to call it, instead of sprite, I'm going to call it antenna. And if I click it, right, you don't see the rectangle because I put it after the face. I'm going to put this over here. Or I put it before the face. So underneath this square face is a rectangle. So if I put it like over here, right, you'll see it. So I need to move this over here. So let's move the X position and the Y position. Like, it's like negative 100, 182. So let's do like negative 100, 180. We'll put it over there. We'll do that first. I got that number from hovering my mouse. Like where I kind of like I want the middle of my rectangle to be. And then I kind of, I'm just going to, uh, you know, round it off to the closest, you know, uh, uh, 0 or 5. Negative 100, 180, I'll call it. Negative 100, 180. I still didn't complete requirement number three. All right, so this is kind of like, right, but now I want to have it actually touch the head, right? And I want it to be not so wide. So I'm going to change the width from 100, I don't know, like to 20. And the height doesn't quite reach. Let's do, add in another uh, 20 pixels. Height, uh, let's do like 70, see what happens. It doesn't quite make it. Let's do 80 pixels. There we go. That's fine. Now you see how it kind of like the tiny, tiny bit goes over like the and the, rec the rectangle. If you wanted to do it, you could either adjust the the height of it. So if I made this like you know 78 pixels of the height. That's pretty close. Or you said what you could do is if you put the antenna first before you put the face, any overlap will be covered because the face will be on top of the, of the initial rectangle. Now let's do number three, requirement number three. So we have to add in a click event. So let's go to events, sprite click. Now we have to have something that's going to, uh, we're going to click on something and then something will happen to animate some part of your robot face. So some kind of action will happen. So first I have to figure out what I want to click. I'm going to say if you click anywhere on the face. So in order to ha make that happen, I have to change this where it says sprite to face because that's what our face is called. Face is called face, believe it or not. So right now if I click on face, if I run our program, I click on face, oops. I don't have anything called Sprite. My mistake, I did that on purpose, right? Just to show you what uh, uh, a mistake looks like. Yeah. So I have to have, I'll say the mouth will say it. So if I click on the mouth, or click on the face, the mouth will say, hello name. 
It's easy that the mouse says hello name. Hey, you clicked on me. Now I want to add in some more actions. I'm going to make my uh, eyes spin around, right? So I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to do a turn right. Where did we go? Where's turn right? Let's do turn right and a turn left. Oops, this one doesn't line up. So in order to be considered to be inside the click event, we have to make sure that it's everything is indented correctly. Now I have two things called sprite. I don't have anything called sprite. I have I1, I2. So I'm going to do I1 and I2. Now I'm going to make these do a 360. It's been all the way around. One revolution. Great job. So if I click on the face, say you clicked on me, and then you saw the eyes spun around. Great job. Check plus. What time is it? 1036. All right, got time. All right. So now we got. Now we're going to get to that Alma Thomas painting about the project. Many artists use simple shape arrangements to create impressive works of art. Alma Thomas was an African-American expressionist painter in the early 20th century. So, you know, 1920s and that kind of stuff. She used shapes and colors to create many well-loved pieces of art. Your task, try to recreate an Alma Thomas painting in code. Use what you know about the various shapes in the shapes toolkit to make your own piece of art. Don't worry about matching exactly. Try to capture the spirit of the painting. Let's get started. So, Let's look at our ticket first. Create a project planner. Step one, identify the main project goal and the listed project requirements. So the main project goal is to use code to draw one of Alma Thomas's paintings. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that over here on goal number one. Other things I want to do. I want to, um, uh, let's see, use shapes to, um, Recreate the painting. Add animation. All right, I don't really have a fourth goal. Describe your project. So my project will recreate. I think the name was like you know untitled. Create an untitled Alma Thomas painting. using six rectangles. Sex rectangles? Not sex rectangles. That'd be something totally different. Six rectangles. All right, there we go. Then I use pseudocode. So the pseudocode you're gonna do in the actual code. To give you an example over here. So here's the pseudocode, if you remember from the last project, is going to be, t it's a, starts off with a hashtag, and it's just gonna write in plain English or whatever language you're gonna to wanna to write it in, is you're gonna describe what's happening or what you want to happen in this section of code. So here I have create two big blue, two big blue rectangles. So I have blue one and blue two. <clears throat> then I have a hashtag sprite, uh, create the rectangles in the middle. So I have these four rectangles over here. Then step four, add actions to animate shapes. So here I have my uh, my uh, my middle, my rectangles in the middle are all. Uh, hiding, waiting for a second, and then showing back up again. So the same thing, All right? Step four is to actually build the pro uh, the product, uh, the project. So you first you, you I can't talk. You do your pseudo code, and then step four is to actually create use the code to actually do the actual things that you want your program to do, All right? And I suggest you do it as you finish each step. Click save and run. See if it's working the way you want. And then when you're done for everything, you're going to go ahead and make sure that um, you answer the self-check questions, and then you turn it in And when you're ready. Then you do your reflection. Did you meet all the re assignment requirements? Uh, yes, I did. Did you meet your personal goals for your finished product? I did. Did you include comments with studio code? I did. So let's take a look at what mine actually looks like. Let's run it. So I have my two, two big blue rectangles. I use the, what I know about parameters 
and comments in order to identify how I want my picture to look, right? And how I want my rectangles to look. I knew my, my rectangles were going to go all the way from the top to the bottom. So what I did first, I went to Alma Thomas paintings, right? I just Googled it up. I'm going to images. I'm going to find an Alma Thomas painting that looks relatively easy to, <laughs> to reproduce. Right? So some of them are, you can see, are relative, are pretty complicated. So if I pick something like, uh, I don't know, uh, like, uh, like this one over here, right? This is maybe doable, although I find it hard to kind of reproduce like these kind of like, you know, partial circles. So, <clears throat> but I mean, it's possible. But, or if you want to do something like this, I wouldn't expect you to get every single little tiny rectangle in here. But if you got like the big, you know, stripes, that would be good enough. I, that would uh, capture the spirit of the Alma Thomas painting. You saw, let me see if I can find the one that I did. Uh, it's similar to this one, right? So if you wanted to do this one, right, you just need to do the same thing I did. We just need some different colored rectangles in a different order. So again, it doesn't have to be, the measurements don't have to be exact, all right? You just need to get kind of close, all right? Close enough so you capture the spirit. I'm not expecting perfection. Obviously, you can't. Uh, you know, without all the, you can see like the subtle shading and that kind of stuff that makes it look like, I mean, that, that shows it's an actual painting and not just, you know, a reproduced, you know, uh, piece of uh, digital art. Obviously, you can tell that this was done on a computer, right? I mean, it's possible that you could, you know, pan paint this. Definitely, there are certainly, you know, uh, painters who have that level of skill to, you know, perfectly straight lines and all this kind of stuff. But anyways, I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about capturing the spirit of this Emma Thomas painting, and I have done that, I hope, all right? Well, maybe one thing I might do is I go stage dot, I could put in a background color of white. I don't like that gray color. Let's do uh, stage, right? And let's go to, I want a background color. Is that background color? I want this to be white. I think I look a little bit better. Hmm. Okay, I guess. There we go. And you see, like I said, some of my rectangles are not going to be the exact same width as the rectangles they are in the uh, in the uh, in the actual painting, but that's fine as long as you get pretty close. All right, there you go. So again, you got to make sure you find a first step is to find a good Alma Thomas painting that you think you can reproduce relatively easy, like some of the circle ones. Might, that wouldn't be too bad. You just add in some circles of different sizes and colors and just, you know, layer them correctly. You saw like when I, I talked about measuring, putting the antenna be like behind the robot's face so, you know, things can overlap and all that kind of stuff. And whichever one is most recently, then, uh, you know, the, whichever one is at the bottom, remember our programs go from top to bottom, It'll, whichever one is, has been, is at the bottom will be the thing that's on, on the top layer of our painting. Think of it that way. You could maybe do like this heart thing over here. That wouldn't be too bad to do. And then just add in some animation. Like I said, you saw with mine, I just, basically I just did this, right? I did my red shows up, red hides, wait a second, and then my red shows up. And then I just copied this and pasted it. And then I did this, they, all I did was just change the variable names from red to orange and from uh to yellow and, and for green, and then I just copied all this and pasted it again, so, I, so it happened twice. And that was it. That's not too bad, right? And for this, like I said, this is a relatively simple. Like I said, I, I would suggest just, you know, I mean, you can try. I'm not going to dissuade you from trying some more complicated poems. I mean, uh, 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 paintings. A poem is, a painting is sort of like a poem, right? A visual poem. Anyways. So I don't want to dissuade you from trying to uh, uh, attempt a more complicated painting, but if you're getting frustrated with that, maybe step back and try a simpler one and add in some cooler animations and stuff like that. All right, so I hope this helps you out. Uh, I will see you guys in class.